Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm here in Mount Franklin, which is a volcanic crater. A little bit of a different intro, but um, yeah, it's kind of cool here. Extinct volcanic crater. I'll give you a 360 of this place. Which is kind of cool. I've been out looking for secondhand DVDs and I found some. So part of what I'm going to do in this video is show you the haul I've got. There's one incredibly problematic thing that I bought, which I'm going to share with you anyway. Um, let me know what you think. It's a little sketchy, but we'll see how we go. It's winter and I'm in a volcano and more when I get back home. The next day I'm back home and that trip to Bendigo, which is about a round trip of 300 kilometers, was a lot of fun. Uh, it was unusually warm for this time of year and it was good to just chill out and see some things I hadn't seen before. And I hit some charity stores to pick up a few movies and I ended up, as I said in the intro here, with something incredibly problematic, but I picked it up for, I don't know why, but I picked it up. So let's get started with the other movies that I got. I'm not a big fan of live action Disney films from the 60s and 70s for a number of reasons, most of which have to do with having seen them in the 60s and 70s. But this one was a dollar, so I thought I'd pick it up. It's a weird little piece of movie. It cost eight million bucks to make, which wasn't a small change in 1974 when it came out. It's a little thing called Island at the Top of the World, which is a Disney movie which, in spite of the fact that the budget was okay, seems to have some very ordinary actors in it. The main star of it's an American called David Hartman, who has zero charisma, zero acting ability, and kind of scary teeth. He plays a scientist who, in 1970s, Shanghai by a rich Briton played by Donald Sindon to travel into the Arctic to find a lost civilization where his missing son may be. They actually go on a French airship and fly to the Arctic. The captain of the ship is played by an actor called Jacques Moran who steals the movie effortlessly. They take with them an Inuit guide played by Mako, uh, the Japanese actor, who doesn't look a lot like an Inuit. So they travel to a lost valley kept warm by volcanoes around it where a lost Viking civilization from a thousand years ago has survived into the present day. Now this movie was based on a novel and the novel was kind of okay according to most people but the movie's got so many problems. First of all the special effects even for 1974 are what we in the trade call shitty. Uh, th there's just so many things wrong with the special effects in this movie that you could have got away with in the 50s and maybe the early 1960s, but by 1974, it's low-class stuff. And I know that uh, they spent a bit of money on it, and the little airship they've got looks kind of cool, and it's got that kind of retro, slightly steampunky feel to it. And basically, this is the same kind of stuff that Hollywood was doing 30, 40 years before in the jungles of Africa. It's a really bad movie. I watched it last night and it's going on my list of bad movies. I think I've seen it before, maybe in the 1970s I saw it. Most of the actors aren't very good. It, Donald Sinden does try to give us some energy and does okay. Jacques Moran does pretty well. But in general, the acting is not very good. And all of the people from the Viking civilization 
are a whole bunch of Scandinavian actors and some of them are speaking Icelandic and some of them are speaking Danish and some of them are speaking Norwegian and some are speaking Swedish. It's a bit of a hodgepodge there to anybody who knows their Scandinavian languages. It was directed by Robert Stevenson who'd done a whole bunch of things for Disney before. Man, here's the thing. The screenplay is by John Whedon, who's the grandfather of Josh Whedon. So the, you know, the Whedon dynasty is, at this stage of things, not looking too good. It says on the front, Walt Disney Family Collection, which should have been a, a red flag for me, but it wasn't. I kind of regret watching it. It used to be owned by somebody called Dot, because the name's on the front of the disc. But these things are going for like 12 to 15 bucks each on uh, eBay at the moment. And I paid a dollar for it. Well, it was actually up in uh, Bendigo at a place called Kangaroo Flat, which is one of the suburbs of Bendigo. And I just happened to be passing a charity store, popped in and picked up that. And yeah, for a dollar, it's worth it. Any, if you pay anything more than a dollar for it, you're probably getting ripped off. So that was the first thing I got. Then I paid two dollars for this one because it's a classic James Cagney movie. When was it, um, does it say what year it's from? It was written by Henry Hathaway. Pretty good cast. James Cagney, Richard Conti, Frank Lattimore, Walter Abel, Sam Jaffe. And it's a little bit of World War II drama made after World War II called 13 Rue Madeleine. Now I haven't seen this one, so I'm gonna check that out because I don't mind a bit of classic 1950s I'm gonna guess at. The French Resistance in it. It's got Gestapo people. It's got all the things you want. Uh, let's see what aspect ratio it is. That'll probably tell me what it is. Yeah, it's got to be mid 1950s at least because it's in 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. But um, I thought I'd check that one out and just see whether it's any good. Uh, if nothing else, I'd at least I can say that I've seen it. Yeah, two dollars for that one, which you know you're going to take a punt on a classic Hollywood film for two dollars. I mean, at the moment around here, a cup of a double espresso will cost me four dollars to four dollars fifty. And I know Sally keeps telling me not to compare things to the price of coffee, but in this case it's kind of relevant. Third one is a bit of a blind buy. Know nothing about it and I doubt if many other people do, but the stars of the movie are what got me involved in this one. Probably from the 1970s. Cinematography was by Gary Graver, which is kind of interesting. And it's uh, something with starring Roddy McDowell and Stella Stevens. Star Hunter. Now, let me know if you want me to review this one, because I know nothing at all about it. It came out, um, it doesn't say the year, but... Uh, I'm not even going to read the back blurb. I want to go into this one as cold as possible. I know it's about aliens landing in Los Angeles. But apart from that, I know nothing about it. And I'm going to check it out because of Roddy McDowell and Stella Stevens being in it. Um, I'm probably going to be disappointed, to be honest with you. But again, it's, it's going to be a little bit of fun. And maybe it can be put into a worst of the year compilation I'm going to do at the end of the year. I'm going to do my best first watches of the year, my best rewatches of the year, and my worst first watches of the year toward the end of 2022. So let's see how we go with that. Again, this one was $2. Again, I'm going to take a chance on it for $2. Now, these things I picked up a while back, but I wanted to talk about them. Uh, this is an interesting film, which I don't think got enough love when it came out about a decade or so ago. Based on a Robert E. Howard character, it's James Purifoy in Solomon Kane. Now this one I recommend, I, I watched it a while back and I think it's an honest adaptation of the original pulp stories that Robert E. Howard um, wrote. And it's a fantasy film that, that's got a little bit of guts to it, it's got a little, a little bit of toughness to it. And it is well made, so I'm going to re-watch that, I'm going to put it into a video at some stage in the future. But uh, this one I got two for five dollars at a market. And uh, for two dollars fifty again, not a bad buy. Man, I'm gonna enjoy that, I think. Unless my opinion of it's changed in the last decade. And this one turns up everywhere. It's on every market store with DVDs and Blu-rays in Australia. Uh, directed by Choi Hark, who was one of the great Hong Kong action directors. Starring Jet Li. 
it's a little bit of a kind of superhero vigilante kind of thing called Black Mask. Now I know I've seen this one but I don't remember anything about it. I may even have seen it on VHS back in the day. But I'm going to give it a go. It says an eye-popping John Woo style action extravaganza. Now if any one of those words is right it's going to be a great thing apart from the John part. I'm going to uh, check that one out again. There's a lot of this DVD stuff coming out in second-hand places. People are getting rid of their physical media, which is great for a lot of us. But a lot of the physical media that's turning up in the charity shops around here are things like you know, Season 5 of Friends and uh, kind of the, the lesser things. There's a very mundane and ordinary kind of um, videos and TV series. There's a lot of um, Kevin Spacey's House of Cards out there going very, very cheaply for some reason. Yeah, physical media, people are just getting dispatched with and it's becoming very niche. It's becoming boutique, which is why Umbrella and Imprint and all of those companies are doing quite well, um, kind of micro-targeting physical media collectors. But a lot of people are ditching their physical media or else they're dying and their relatives are leaving it to charity stores. But I found something when I was in Ballor. Uh, I found something when I was in Bendigo which was eye-popping. Now, occasionally, laser discs turn up in um, charity stores here, which is kind of odd because laser discs didn't really catch on very well in Australia. There weren't any native pressings. The ones that we got here were crazily expensive. And even though the quality was better than VHS, it was still a, a problematic and, and kind of kludgy format. And I don't have a laser disc player, but I bought something for $5. Two laser discs from the 1940s, which are racist. Now, some people are going to disagree. I'm going to get a lot of comments with people going, "No, it's not racist. It was considered okay at the time, but it's it's not racist. It's just honouring the past of showbiz, all that kind of crap." But I'm not going to enter into this one. So it cost me five dollars. But if you look at the back of it, there's a sticker there that says, and I'll try to get it to focus, ninety-five dollars. This thing cost ninety-five dollars when it first came out in Australia. And I picked it up for five bucks. It says Columbia Classics. And it stars Larry Parks and Evelyn Keys. The Jolson Story and Jolson Sings Again on Laserdisc. And there's a lot of blackface in it, which is why it's racist. Uh, the, the weird thing is I've never actually looked at Laserdisc very much. There are pretty copious liner notes on this one. With a lot of detail in it. And, and yeah, the light's shining out because I haven't taken off. Actually, I will take off this cover now that I've shown you the $95 sticker, so it's easier to show you things. So yeah, there are lots of liner notes on it. And I don't have a way of playing it. I'm not sure I'd watch it if I did because it would kind of raise my blood pressure, which I'm trying to lower at the moment. It says, splashily expert piece of entertainment better than the first time. That's a Luella Parsons talking about Jolson Sings again. Wonder why they never remade these movies. But yeah, I, I, I'm trying to work out why I got this, why I picked it up, why I bought it. Simple answer, I have no idea. Maybe to get it off the market to stop somebody who thinks it's blackface is okay from buying it. I'm not sure, but um, I'm gonna keep it here in the zone of uh, movies. And I'm not gonna like it being here. Uh, I don't like destroying movies, so I'm not going to do anything dramatic with this, uh, with these laser discs. Weird thing is, uh, I did check it up on eBay, and these are going from anywhere from sixty dollars to about thirty dollars. So, uh, you know, five dollars was a very reasonable price if I wanted to pass it on through selling it online, and if anybody, of course, wants to buy it. But no, nah, not this time around. I can understand the historical context of these films. I can understand why people liked them at the time they were very very popular in fact it gets mentioned in the first of the anthology series that george rr R. martin uh produced uh wild cards one of the characters uh jet boy his last words were i can't die yet i haven't seen the jolson story uh that was in 1946 but uh i'm feeling very very kind of congested mentally and morally about owning these movies. But I've got them now, I'm gonna put them away there. They're gonna be part of the archive. 
But yeah, you know, I know I know some people are going to disagree in the comments. I'm kind of braced for that. But I think that even at the time, and I've done a little bit of research on this, and when people say they've done research, they sound like right-wing nut jobs. But I've done a little bit of a deep dive, and I've um, kind of followed through some several sources, including some movie reference books. Blackface wasn't okay even at the time it was popular. There, were, the NAACP did a lot of protests against it. A lot of people who were a little more aware of the mockery of people of colour that it represents were critical of it at the time. So in this sense it's a historical artefact. It's like only a copy of Birth of a Nation maybe or Gone with the Wind which I've talked about in a previous video. But yeah this one not entirely happy with it being here but I got it out of circulation, let's put it that way. So that's the haul. Uh, that was my trip to Bendigo, which I, I love. The weather stayed good for me. And that's it for this time around. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of any of these movies. You can also support the channel financially by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema. I'm posting written reviews of movies up on that site. I just did a review of Jurassic Park Dominion, which is kind of, that was fun to review, even though it's uh, not the best movie. But I enjoy the written reviews as much as I enjoy doing these videos, so that's it. Anyway, meanwhile, look after yourselves. Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Don't necessarily watch these movies, and I'll catch you next time.